With the aid of technology, we're now able to propel our bodies through the air with incredible speed and agility. But we're still limited by one critical problem, gravity. Because as pilots throw their planes through ever more violent twists and turns, it's as if the force of gravity becomes magnified. Magnified to such an extent that it pulls all the blood away from their head and they lose consciousness. And that's not good. Jet fighters have, of course, continued to advance and become capable of ever more extreme maneuvers, apart from one part of them, the pilot, the human element, because the human body, well, that stayed pretty much the same. And who'd have thought that when scientists turned to nature for inspiration, the one creature that could help us withstand this high-tech, high-speed, dynamic, dangerous environment would be the giraffe. The giraffe has to be one of the most recognizable animals on Earth. There's no mistaking that distinctive long neck. But giraffes hold a secret that might just be the key to the pilot's life or death problem. And it's a secret that's hidden in that long neck. Because, by rights, when the giraffe lowers its head down to take a drink, the consequences should be catastrophic. There is a critical issue here, pressure, as I shall now demonstrate with this giraffe. Don't worry, it's not a real one, it's actually a model built to roughly the scale of a small giraffe. Important thing is, this represents the heart. There's actually a pump in there. That's going to pump this, representing the blood, along these arteries, all the way up to the giraffe's head there. In other words, the same way blood works in the human body. But the giraffe's head is so high that it takes far more pressure to get it up there. That was a human's blood pressure, straight past that. In fact, a giraffe has roughly twice our blood pressure. It's the highest blood pressure of any living thing. But that high blood pressure is only down by the heart, where the pump is working furiously. Up at the head, the pressure is much the same as ours. And that is how it stays, until it decides to lower its head to have a drink. Then everything changes. This is the right place to do this, because giraffes actually do come here to drink. So let's give it a go. As I turn the handle, all that blood starts going down towards the ground, just like with the jet pilots. And straight away, watching my meter on, see the blood pressure is rising back up again quite quickly. And now it's rising more because now the head's getting lower than the heart. And suddenly everything's changed. It's not pumping it all the way up there anymore. Gravity is helping and it's flooding down to the head. That blood pressure is going way past what it should be, and now it's into the danger zone for our giraffe, and things are looking bad, very bad. Obviously, its head doesn't really fly off. In reality, as the blood pressure rises, as the head comes down and gravity steps in, a giraffe's head would, well, it would explode. But they don't explode every time they come to drink, otherwise this place would be littered with bits of them. So, what's happening? Well, there is only one way to find out. By attempting to measure the blood pressure, not of a model giraffe, but of a real one. This team of vets and surgeons from a Danish university are already doing just that. and they hope that what they find out might just help the millions of us who suffer from high blood pressure. First, they open up the neck. 
inside is part of the giraffe's secret. Its arteries actually contract to cope, and valves in the neck stop the blood being dragged down by gravity. To assess just how effective this system is, the Danish team are aiming to measure the giraffe's blood flow just the same way I did on my model, by putting pressure sensors at both the head and the heart. Safely recovered from the operation, the giraffe is released. Undamaged, but now Wi-Fi enabled. This is the first time a giraffe has ever had its blood pressure monitored in this way. But what will happen to the readings when the giraffe bends down to drink? As soon as the head lowers, the giraffe's arteries constrict automatically. And though the pressure continues to rise, the giraffe's blood doesn't suddenly rush to the head, but stays where it's needed, leaving the patient completely unharmed. Which takes us back to Jets. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting for one moment that giraffes would make good fighter pilots. But they are, as we've seen, very good at controlling blood pressure and distribution of blood around the body. And that's very important in here. Because this capsule is designed to recreate the forces that a fighter pilot experiences whilst flying. And those forces are immense. The faster they accelerate, break or turn, the greater the effect of G-force on the body. At 2G, you feel you weigh twice as much as normal, and breathing is twice as hard. At 3G, the effects are tripled, and blood starts to struggle to get to your brain. Go further, and you lose your peripheral vision. Then all sense of color. Finally, around 4 or 5G, your vision disappears entirely, and you lose consciousness. Today, in here, using technology that mirrors very closely what happens in the giraffe's neck, we're hoping to see 9G. Five seconds of that is enough to go through all of those stages to unconsciousness. And I'm not doing it. The German Air Force, who run this place, require three months of rigorous medical testing before they'll approve a pilot. And this man, Ralph, is the lucky winner. Ralph has been chosen as the guinea pig for a completely new form of flying suit. It's called the giraffe. A series of valves and chambers stop the blood pooling by compressing the body, just like the constrictions in the giraffe's neck. And the result, well, it looks Pretty damn impressive. What? Oh, this? Yeah, you noticed. <laughs> Andreas, I'll be honest. No offence, this is your invention, I know. I feel a bit silly right now. But this is the first incarnation of your giraffe suit. What have I and a giraffe got in common right now? It starts with some muscles here. There are fluid muscles to, uh, to contract the fabric. If they are blowed up, then we are creating a tension to compress the body. And I've actually got a little thing here I can inflate myself. Oh, I can now feel that squeezing down here. There are various pockets where air gathers. That then tensions the material, yeah? Absolutely, and it starts on the feet. And then we bring down, uh, up the blood back to the right place, to your heart, and especially to your brain. So this would be squeezing me like a giant tube of toothpaste? That's true. It's, it's like, a, how we say, a, the opposite milking as what you're doing in Switzerland. For the milk, it's more or less the same thing, but the opposite way. Luckily for our pilot, 
In the new version of the giraffe suit, all those tubes and chambers are hidden discreetly away. They're now so small that a tiny amount of air should be enough to activate them and stop the blood draining from the pilot's head. But will giraffe technology be enough to stop Ralph losing consciousness? This is the world's largest and most powerful centrifuge. That arm is capable of spinning that capsule around this cavernous room 37 times in a minute, which works out roughly that the capsule itself is traveling at the best part of 90 miles an hour that way. But it's not that speed that's important. It's what that speed generates in this direction, g-force. And that g-force will pull the pilot's blood downwards, just as gravity did to the giraffe. What I've been told is, Ralph, who's in the pod, is going to fly himself with the joystick, and he'll subject himself to 9G. Ralph has monitors taped all over him. So just like with the South African giraffe, they can monitor the blood pressure at both his heart and his head. Are you ready? Yes, I am. It'll be fine. I'm glad he's confident, because he is launching himself into unknown territory. Three, two, one, go. Right now, as he slowly increases and tightens the turn, the blood is going to have a harder and harder time getting up to Ralph's head. And from here on in, it's only going to get worse. Now I'm going up. More Gs. A little bit more, just five Gs. Six. Now we have seven, eight Gs. Now we block nine Gs. Nine Gs. Just did know. Whilst chatting. But the test isn't over. With Ralph still at nine G. Andreas takes the controls and decides to push it just that little bit further. Not only is Ralph not struggling, he appears to be enjoying it. Wow. Oh, nice. So much so, that he has a little surprise for us. His face might be ending up stretched over his knees, but he's managing to do a Rubik's Cube at 9G. I can't do those at 1G. Thank you. It's me. <laughs> I mean, giraffes don't do this, but it is linked directly to how giraffe's neck works. Who knew? Who'd have thought? If the giraffe suit passes the rest of its testing process so convincingly, then, thanks to the giraffe, G-Force might be one less thing for fighter pilots to worry about. <laughs>